Are you a little wee? And as, as we start recording, uh, the phone's ringing, but it'll be answered by my assistant. Oh, have, yeah. has she heard you call her that? No, no but she no. will about 20 minutes after this is posted yeah. on the 12th yeah. of June. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Yeah. But it's Friday, although, you know, it seems like every other damn day. <laughs> it's, yeah, it depends on, <laughs> on your point of view. So, but here we are. Mm hmm. Uh, the, your package hasn't arrived yet. No, it has I'm not. I'm talking about your underwear. No, I'm yeah. talking about your, your package. Yeah. Have you been it's, tracking it? I have been tracking it every morning. I, I check the tracking and it says, um, date to be determined. Leave us alone, is what it says. <laughs> I see. <laughs> it's that guy up in Sanders Stash yeah. again, right? It says date pending. Get the hell away from us, would you please? <laughs> so, <laughs> I think you're starting to rile them. <clears throat> anyway, the package contains Andrew Cadell's book, The Goal, and um, a piece of equipment that we're going to try to use to try to straighten out your microphone problems, but let's continue. Do you have anything All to right. share well, with we, us this we, morning? We seem it's... to have cobbled together a solution for that. I hope so. Over the I next hope so. Days. Yes. And it is, it, it is an odds and sods Friday. I've got a, 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 a passel of things here, but I will let you go first since. Uh... Okay. I will share screen if you oh, able me. That's right too. I keep forgetting about that. All right, please continue. Oh God, I was I I was watching. It was the twenty ninth of March edition, and it was an odds and sods one. I just I just picked one at random the other yes. day. It was and it was just hysterically funny. Yeah, I was out of frame half the time. Yes, and the look on your face getting <laughs> me back in, and we were just some of the comments that go by because neither of us listens to each other. No, we speak like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you'll tell me yeah. a joke the next day that I told you two weeks before <laughs> as if it was news to you. So this is, I'm used to this. Yeah, like two small years. planes taking off at an airport, you know, get up, get up. No, he's still coming at us. And the phone rings 10 minutes later. Did I tell you the one about the new? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Oh. God. Yeah, left to our own devices. It's just, it's, it's a slow train wreck. Okay, so uh, today... Oh, course, here we go. Your this has been your favorite since the dawn of the web. This is the only page you've had on your, on right. your browser. That's right. right. Yeah. I, my, I had my son in hysterics from last Friday's. He said, Dad, how many tabs did you put? Yeah. <laughs> I That's couldn't right. believe it. Yeah, yeah. There's a better way, Dad. I have many too. Yes, I'm sure there is a better way, but you what and I haven't hell? figured it this out. This is as far as I'm going to go. Uh, we're, we may get rain today. We could certainly use it. Uh, the gardens are awfully dry. Uh, I decided yesterday to look into research. Uh, I, I consulted uh, the best neuroscientists and uh, anthropologist, historian, and a couple of guys I saw across the street. Okay. And is this we someone we know? Down this is someone through we know. history. Okay. Why people smile. Yeah. From the youngest little baby. Yes. It is not a learned um, aspect Behavior? of our life. It is, it is something that we are born with. Oh. To smile. Okay. We see it in, in others. And we like, so from the youngest baby to, you know, old geezers. Yes. Old farts. Yeah. Yeah. We learn to smile, and we have found out why we smile. It took about nine shots to get that shot, by the way, because I'm not. <laughs> Is I'm that a, right? Yeah, I'm not this a one? smiler. I'm not a smiler. Yeah. By, no, by. I, I. You know what? And I think. You know, oh, I'm going to get in hell for this. But I think. I think women are better at it than men. Men. You just, think so? Well, there's some guys that have a natural ability, but I, yeah. I'm. I'm like you. I'm not a good smiler. No. I'm very just, tentative uh, when it's, it's, it's like, over yeah. now. Yeah. So Am I reason, showing off? Yeah. Yeah. We, the reason we smile is the accordion. Oh. I was surprised too. I'm, I was I'm surprised that. as you look now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason we, we smile. We smile. Now, okay. The reason we frown. Yes. Is 
all these colors together in one picture. Oh, okay. See, they're, they're, they're pretty ugly colors. Yeah, right? make, that, that, that makes orange. me smile. So that, I like that. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. we'll, get to, we'll get to your this, unique. This looks like a test pattern from uh, Lithuania or someplace. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Join us tomorrow at 7 <laughs> right. for Cooking with Flara. That's right. There we are. So mm -hmm. That's what makes you gra uh, oh, Yeah. Okay. So these, There's these... another reason, but there are two reasons. Yes. There's only the one reason that makes you smile. There are two reasons that make you frown. Two accordions. Yeah. Okay. Apparently there's a, there's, a, there's a threshold. There's, there's a, a, one a correlation rate. there. Okay. Two things start to get just a little bit dangerous. So, uh, and, and of course, uh, down crying and real fear is when two people actually pick up the accordion. Lady of Spain, I adore you. Uh, yeah. And there's Newt Gingrich. And there is one my. particular. You see now that, that's more my expression there. That's an yeah. old photograph, but that's, yeah, that's me. Very serious. That's me. Yeah. Um, Laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing on the inside. That's right? right. Yeah. But there is one, and it is unique as far as we know, as far as my research has taken me, there's one unique reason why this person doesn't like to smile. There you go. This person. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You see, can you see it? Look after, at that. after 40 years, you think I would have learned my lesson, but no. Yeah. But there I am, adorable, smiling. Yes, absolutely. Getting in your face and you're just People, pissed. Women want to come up and squeeze your cheeks. <laughs> so there we are. Now, do dogs smile? We apparently they do. I was do. reading a piece. Yes, they do, apparently. They do. And, and some of it is a reaction to, they don't tell each other jokes. They sniff each other's ass instead. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. But dogs do Sometimes have a Sometimes that's face. funny. That can be funny. It depends what you have for lunch. <laughs> yeah, at the checkout at the IGA, it right? Depends. <laughs> it depends what you had for lunch, and uh, it can be funny. I guess. <laughs> wow, you're clever. <laughs> and the reason uh, dogs smile is because of a tennis ball. Oh, it? yeah. yeah Especially I'm... if you throw it. Yes. So... That's pretty much uh, pretty much it. That's I your have essay. A, what happened today. on this date? Okay, I'd like to share it. Sure. This is uh, this is Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Yes. Starring Dick Simmons. Dick Simmons. June the twelfth, nineteen forty-seven. Uh, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon went on radio for the first time. It was broadcast until nineteen fifty-five, and then in fifty-eight they had a television series. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It was created by the same people. It was an American show. So their idea of the Yukon is about as yeah, good as like, uh, you would like imagine. Westchester County. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was, just, it was uh, created by the same people who created the Lone Ranger and the Green Hornet, uh, Fran Stryker and George Trendle. And of course the dog mm -hmm. was who named is King. Who is smiling? Is that is that who what is brought smiling? you to this photograph? I beg pardon. Were you googling smiling dogs and you you came uh, upon? I, yeah. Well, no. Oh. I just I wanted to check on uh, on what actually happened on the twelfth. You know, I like to find out about important days in mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I happened across this. Dick's put, putting on a pretty good smile too. Yep. Well, there we are, Sergeant yep. Preston of Yukon with actor Dick Simmons. Now, this dog is called King, but not to be confused. Whoops, not, not Myrna. Uh, Myrna's on Monday. Yep. Uh, not to be confused with William Lyon Mackenzie King, mm -hmm. who talked to his dog Pat after Pat had passed along. Oh, yes, I heard about that. Yes, in, in seances he, and things like that. Strange. On strange. the phone, occasionally. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> collect. The dog was you. really not pleased with it. It's for you. <laughs> and the photograph you just showed is Myrna Lashley, who will be joining us on and Monday. There is Dr. Myrna Lashley, who will be joining us uh, who is Monday. A... And I'm sure I'm I'm sorry I shared Myrna in my lunacy, but uh, there we are. Okay, we'll talk about Myrna later. Who was my goodness speaking to forces to be reckoned with? 
Oh, yeah. And she's um, got a few things to say about these days. So there we are. All right. I got a few things here, too. Um, okay. Is there a rant involved or is it all there's lighthearted? No, there's no job? rant. It's going to be kind of a low key, but I wanted to, to pick up on what we were talking about yesterday. Uh, near the end of our little chat after we spoke with Caitlin Kelly, uh, this is Senior Wences, and people asking me, who the hell is Senior Wences? And he was on the Ed Sullivan from Brazil show. or Argentina. He was it? from Spain. Spain, okay. And uh, <laughs> his, his name was Wenceslao Moreno. He was born in Spain, died in 1999 at the age of 103. He appeared on the Ed Sullivan show 48 times. <laughs> Literally, the same, the same, 48 yeah. times. Yeah, only Wayne and Schuster were on more. And his gag was putting, as you mentioned yesterday, putting lipstick on his hand and putting little eyes and dressing up and hanging some <laughs> stuff there. And it was a ventriloquism kind of a deal. And Sullivan just adored him. So he was on 48 times on the Ed Sullivan Show. And- uh, Look at the hair. Yeah. And I was referring to a rant that I saw um, Stanley Tucci do, and this was the the movie I, I tracked it down. It's called America's Sweethearts. Terrible film. Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal, John Cusack, the dreaded Julia Roberts, and the insufferable Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh, the the rest of the movie isn't worth watching, but within, within about the first ten minutes, you'll see Stanley Tucci, and I believe it's Billy Crystal who's in the scene too. And you'll see the Crystal is is barely able to contain himself as he's watching Tucci just fly into a rage describing how, for the better part of a century, this guy made a living <laughs> by flapping his hands on the Ed Sullivan show. And he was comparing the, the senior Wences thing to what Hollywood was all about and how you could just sort of fall all over yourself in front of a camera and make money or something to that effect. So if you ever see this come by, I don't know if you're in a motel someplace or watching a, some, some a cable movie and you, and you see it come on, just watch the first few minutes. You'll see Tucci just Old fly said. into it. I can imagine thing. Tucci being very funny doing that. Oh, it, outstanding. It, it really displays what odd things can really make us angry. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, then and with I, him, it's Senior Wences. I was in tears. So that's stuck in my brain after all these years. Um, Let's get back to gardening, where we're talking about lawns this week, oh. and uh, this is the new turf that was that was put into place this week uh, along the edge of our garden, the, our That's the lovely. one that Madame takes care of, and you'll are see those geraniums. No, I I don't know what those are. They're they're red. That's all I know. I just I just kind of haul stuff around, including the the, and she, uh, Madame is overseeing the watering of this. Uh, of this Kentucky bluegrass is what it is. This is local turf from a few miles away. And uh, I'm, you know, it, it's, it's very nice. And you and I were talking about this yesterday. It's nice to surround yourself with beauty in a lovely garden and a place to uh, gather your thoughts and sit quietly. But I'm, I'm not a big fan of lawns because it, they waste an enormous amount of money. Um, lawn care, billions and billions of gallons of water and fertilizer. And this is nothing against the folks who, who, who make a living taking care of lawns and, and gardens, and things like that. But uh, I would prefer to, um, uh, to uh, lean this way. And I found this piece yeah. in the Boston Globe, the argument for killing your lawn is the, the author's headline. And he talks about, and of course he's in Boston. He says more than one fifth of the state of Massachusetts is covered in turf grass. Uh, and he says the U.S., and these figures are old now. Well, I'm using the United States simply as an example here. The stats would apply here too, relatively speaking. Uh, it's nine to 10 billion gallons of water a day just for, to water lawns. And oh, this got my brother very, very upset, but I said golf courses are eco-disaster. It's, yeah, I, I, I Malcolm agree. Malcolm Gladwell hates them. Yep, and... Uh, and he, and, he, and he mentions Kentucky bluegrass, by the way, which is not native to North America. This, uh, this, the, the grass turf business, th this idea was imported from the English and the French estates. So all of this to say that I would prefer to, uh, to have something like this instead of, of grass. Uh, I like the well, idea. Well, more and more the... people are doing it. Okay, we have people in the neighborhood who have covered our, uh, their lawns with wild grasses, like the ones... Uh, we have, and we have less and less grass and more and more flowers. Yeah, we, have, we don't have much uh, 
in area, but what we do have has been covered now by this. And of course, you have to tend it, and it costs quite a bit of money. It, it was a rather yeah. expensive job to get it done. And st some people are still using a lot of chemicals. Every year, I don't do anything. I just mow it, and I do a little bit of uh, getting rid of the dandelions on my own, like yeah. six now, six. Yeah, but other than that, I don't put anything in it. So we had ours all scraped up and re-turfed, and we'll see how that goes. But I would prefer to have something like this on my front lawn and the back, but the front especially, and then I would park a large statue, just to piss off the neighbors, <laughs> a large statue of St. Francis of Assisi, right smack in the middle, in color, too. I want to plaster <laughs> Light in it color. up at night. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, I'm getting there. And of course, he preached to, to animals, did St. Francis of Assisi, and to the birds. This is why you'll see him with birds occasionally. I would have this bird, I wouldn't have the bird on him. I would have drone, like electronic drone birds <laughs> flying around continually, 24 hours a day, <laughs> and lit at night. And I would have them chirp like those little, you know, those little bird ornaments that you see in the, some Christmas trees in the holidays go, oh, yeah, yes. Ee, ee. <laughs> so I would have that going on 24 hours a day just to piss off the neighbors. <laughs> Every once in a while, he could hold up the Bible. He yeah, especially the neighbor across the street who is a Baptist preacher, by the way, and who uh, he has a swimming pool in his backyard and he yeah. uses it not to swim, but for baptisms. And I'm not kidding. So I would do this just to piss him and everybody else off on the street. <laughs> But a since Baptist minister, yeah. But since I cannot do this, nor can I have the lawn removed, I've turned. Of Why course, have you? Are, you know, have asked, and you've been. I've asked, it. and I've, I've turned to drinking. Of course, as you know. <laughs> I see. And uh, I wanted to share with you. Um, and I, I've been trying. Can you reset your microphone while I keep yammering here? I've been trying yeah, sure. different. Um, Will do. Different boutique. Vodkas. I mean, this is a, a big trend now. Small distilleries in Quebec and in the rest of the country too that produce everything from gin. Gin is a big thing. I know you're a, you're a big gin fan. I'm not that much yeah. of a gin fan, uh, but uh, they're making. Uh, and this is a, a distillery in Sorel Tracy, which is just upriver from where we are here on the south shore, and it's called Les Subversifs or the Subversives. And they produce a gin, a vodka, there's a creme de menthe, and there's also a liqueur. Their site is not terribly clear. They don't really describe the beverages as much as they describe uh, after whom the beverages have been named. Well, I remember La Frere uh, Marie Victorin. Is there not a, a, a CJEP named Marie Victorin? Or? Yes, there is. Yes. So that is that is the name of their gin. The one I'm interested in is, uh, and I'll do another reset on your mic there, please, is Irma Levasseur. That's the name that they've given to their vodka. And Irma Levasseur was the first woman physician in Quebec. Um, and she apparently traveled to Minnesota to do her, her, her medical training because it was, not, uh, it was not available in Quebec at the time. And this is in the early 1900s. And she co-founded the St. Justine's Hospital. And oh. she, she died in obscurity in 1963. Irma Levasseur is her name. And uh, there's she a piece. She founded uh, Saint Justine, so she was uh, a pediatrician. I believe so. Yeah, she, I think she she specialized in pediatrics. I think near the end of her career. But anyway, um, there's a piece that Le Soleil wrote about her uh, coming out of of Sortir de l'Anonymat, but she died uh, in uh, in obscurity in 1963. So I thought that was very interesting. Mm. And so I toast to Dr. Irma every time I have a little bit of a sip here. And this is an excellent vodka. I've tried several others made in Quebec and elsewhere in Canada from Muskoka and Ontario. I, I tried one made with potatoes, uh, which is so what the, the original... The Leo here is, a, is an amber. Uh, that is a liqueur, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. That's, that's not vodka. No, that's not vodka. Vodka, Irma is the vodka. Oh, Marie Victorin okay. Marie is the Victoria gin. Is my stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and Isabelle, which is named after a Métis woman, is uh, creme de menthe. So it's an interesting website, but not terribly informative about the, about the, uh, the drinks themselves. Uh, however, there's another one I purchased here that I haven't yet tried. It's from Quebec City. It's called Cap Diamant. So I'll, I'll report on that one. But I, the others I've tried from Quebec are not that good. So I won't mention their names. But this one is the one from Les Subversifs is excellent. So La Vodka de Irma, you'll find that at the SAQ. Uh, I don't know which locations, but you can check on their website. 
Um, and is it, is it expensive? It's more expensive than popular brands like this one. This is my, this is my favorite, um, what would you call mainstream brand, Stoli. And um, there's an interesting story behind this one too. I won't go, it's rather long winded, but it's, it's uh, there's, there's a fight between the company that produces this one and the Putin administration. So you'll see on this particular label, it doesn't say Russian vodka, although the ethanol, the beverage alcohol for this one is produced in, in Russia and then exported to Latvia, where it is mixed with water and blended. And Stoli has a pinch of beet sugar in it, imported from the US, strangely enough. And that's what makes for their vodka. This is an excellent vodka. Why, um, why is Putin, uh, it, you don't have to tell the whole story, but why? Well, the, well here's, the, here's, the, here's the other lead-in. You, you, here's the label that you'll see in some other countries because there's, the, there's a fight over the brand, Stolichnaya, which means capital city. It was born in Moscow in the early 20s. And then the company that's producing this version of it, the SPI group, bought the, the rights to the name uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. There's a fight now between Moscow and this company and they're not allowing them to produce it in Russia and export it directly. So that's why it's going via Latvia. Anyway, a long and sordid story, but some folks in the rest of the world can see this label and see that it is labeled as Russian vodka because it is produced by another company in Russia and, stole, and sold under the same label. So it's-, it's I, a, I wouldn't know good vodka from bad it vodka. It depends. I don't know. I guess that's, it's, no my, it's my taste of, it's, my, it's my, my spirit of choice these days. And yes, there are differences. Some of them are kind of sweet and cloying. And this one oh, is it's actually, okay. not this one, but the, the, <clears throat> and if you're looking for, and the Moscow Sky is another one also made by the SPI group. This is also made in Latvia. This is not a Russian vodka per se, although the ethanol comes from Russia. Uh, this one is probably the safest one if you're going to mix drinks. Uh, this one practically has no no flavor to speak of, and it's, it's sold at a popular price here too. And mm -hmm. if you're looking for a Canadian-made vodka, even though the brand is owned by the Diageo company based in the UK, this one is made in Canada, and this is a very good product as well for the money. You can't go wrong with a Smirnoff. If I think it's the, it. maybe the biggest seller, isn't it? It is, yes, it is vodka. huge. Yeah. yeah, and it's made here. Uh, with grains and ethanol produced here. And I found this website I was looking for at St. Francis of Assisi cocktail. I wasn't, there's a Frank, a St. Francis cocktail, but I found this, I, I found this funny, the Catholic Drinky website, catholicdrinky.com. Oh, Catholics and, are known to drink. Oh my goodness, look at this here. And this person, uh, there's, there's no author uh, listed here, but he or she talks about all the drinks that he or she enjoys on the 4th of October, which is the, the, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, an Appletini, all of them made with vodka. Appletinis, well, I'm not sure I'd go near there. A screwdriver, that's probably fine. And of course, sex on the beach. You'll see it's, it's dot, dot, dot on the beach here. It's the, they, whoever wrote it took this, the word sex out, like damn Catholics. <laughs> And, the, and oh, there's a see, lemon you lost drop. lost me on the snaps. Right? And yeah, oh yeah, and there's a lemon drop with lemon juice and sugar. And I'm not a big fan of mixed drinks, but if you're looking for something along the lines, if you make you feel good about uh, celebrating the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, go to Catholic what, Drinky. What day is it? October the 4th. I'll have yeah. to remember that. CatholicDrinky.com. So. I, 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 the only mixed drink, I, well, I have uh, scotch, neat, single malt so it yep. shows you how many times a year i buy that okay and uh but I, brown I, liquor I have, and i don't get along oh Brown's it really here. does hit no. you eh? yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i have martinis as you know gin yes, yes. Uh, but i can't i can't uh, take that too much anymore it hits me right between the eyes so. yeah i like the ungava gin which is the yellow one it is now owned by mm -hmm. corby uh, terrible website too, by the way, but uh, it was uh, it was launched by a Quebec company and Corby snapped it up, and that's that's okay. I like it because it looks interesting. It has an interesting. My my sister brought some back to Europe, and the huge hit there. So every time she comes to to the country, she leaves with two big flagons of yellow gin. They find them. Really I love funny. Bombay. Bombay yeah. is my. I like Tankery's pretty good. Uh, you know, you stay away from beef eaters and stuff like that. It, it, it tastes like uh, it tastes like bad perfume. Uh, That's what but, gin does to me yeah. generally. So, 
but boy, uh, a little tank and tonic or, or Bombay with lots of ice and a couple of, uh, a couple of olives and just a pinch, pinch of vermouth. Yep. Or, or you just pour a glass of gin, a glass of gin while watching a, a painting of the inventor of vermouth. That's how dry I am. <laughs> That's right. Or put some on the humidifier is what my dad used to say. Too. <laughs> so I can see, I can see you there wearing only your socks and your brand new sandals <laughs> sitting on the porch, facing the house. Have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Hi everybody. Hi neighbors. Hi there. Hi. He's, he's having a, he's having And there's a, our friend Myrna. Again. Boy, oh boy! Dr. Myrna Lashley. She's if you going think to be here on Monday, if you think that phony Amy is uh, is active and uh, is all over the place when it comes to this, you wait till you till you meet Myrna Lashley. I have not seen her in many years, but she, it would, it would take us twenty minutes just to rhyme through her her CV. Well, and the number of commissions she's been on, which oh. of course at this point she has an opinion about all the damn commissions that about everything, and nothing happens. Yeah. And I didn't know she's the honorary consulate of Barbados. Yes. Consul, in, in not Barbados. the consulate, but consul. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So she. So, uh, there's a lot going on there. She's doing all sorts of stuff. So we'll yeah. talk to her. On, She'll be with uh, us on Monday. On Monday. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So. All right. So okay. that, was a, that was a trip around the. Uh, that was a trip around, around the, the all kinds of things. Yes. So have a good weekend. All right. You too. And uh, get some rest. You too. And well, maybe my package, do they, are they delivering on the weekend these days? I you know what? Know. It's again, uh, the, uh, we keep har harping about this, but um, yeah, UPS, again, I've got another one coming in now. It shipped yesterday from Toronto. It's in Quebec now. It's in Boisbriand, I think. And it's probably going to sit there for two weeks. So that's what's yeah. going on. Everything is just well, jammed. Yeah, so. of course, they load up these trucks in Mississauga and just drive right to Montreal, right? They're Montreal-specific. <clears throat> but if you've got no one to, and that's what's going on at the processing plant for Canada Post, too, there are 300 uh, semis or semi-trailers sitting there, but there's nobody to unload them. They can't unload themselves. So your package is oh. somewhere at the back of in a the truck midst somewhere. Of that. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. yeah. What a situation. There you go. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to garden. Oh, this weekend. Okay. Like we've got a lot of annuals we still have to get in. I didn't know that you were, uh, that you were a gardener. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I, I help, I help the, uh, the boss. The boss. I got you. Yeah. That's what I yeah. do. What, what am I, I'm her assistant. Okay. Well, you got that one right. Good for you. Okay. Ciao.